good. Alright, well, I'm just gonna have to apologize. My name is way too English to ask them to make less noise on a nice summer's day. Hello, my wonderful friends, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Wellbeing with Helena, and I am Helena, a fourth year medical student. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I just wanted to say thank you so much to every single person who sent me a message to let me know that you've been watching my videos. It honestly means so much to me that you guys are, you know, watching what I'm putting out here, and I really hope that it continues because I love opening up these topics for conversation. So today I'm going to be talking about a little bit of a mind-bending topic. We're going to go into some of the themes that you might think about when you think of The Matrix or Westworld. And the topic that we are going to be talking about is perception. I'm incredibly passionate about mental well-being and mindset and I do believe that if you understand how mindset and how your brain works you can access this key that allows you to open the doors to living a better life and I know that sounds cliche but hopefully by the end of this video you'll understand exactly what I mean. So to begin let's start with a story. I want you to imagine two colleagues Joe and B, and they are long-term friends and they're sitting in a bar. They have a similar educational background, a similar economic background, and they're just enjoying their after work drinks. And a woman walks into the bar and Joe and B both look at this woman and Joe thinks that woman is insanely attractive and B thinks, I don't like that woman. I want you to just think for a minute about why these two women might have such opposing opinions about the same woman. They share a similar background, they share the same kind of job, they share the same kind of economic backgrounds, but for some reason they respond really differently to exactly the same stimulus. So for Joe, whether or not Joe recognises this, subliminally Joe's registered that this woman shares some similar features with Joe's mother and sister. And these are figures who Joe is very close to and she recognises them as loving and trustworthy figures in her life. B, on the other hand, recognises this woman as sharing similar traits to the woman who her father left her mother for. B was brought up with her mother telling her to be wary of women like this, women who pride themselves on their appearance, women who basically have the same biological features, this kind of hair, this kind of build as the woman that Joe's father left the mother for. So essentially what's happened is that Joe and B, despite looking at exactly the same stimulus, are seeing the woman through two different lenses. And these lenses are the lenses of their own perception. To Joe, this woman looks like the ideal of a loving female figure. To B, this woman looks like a man stealer, gold digger kind of woman. And that is because they are applying the lens of their own cultural experiences. So I want to put this formula to you. We're always surrounded by reality. And I'm talking about a hardcore reality, a completely unfiltered, it's around us all the time. But we never access reality in its true state. We view reality through the lens of our own experiences and we apply our own personal narratives to the reality that's around us. There is drilling in the background and I don't know if you're going to be able to hear me so I'm just going to pause this. Okay, so I want to bring a concept to the forefront called inattentional blindness. And there are loads of videos representing inattentional blindness. I would recommend that you go and check one out or I might link one maybe in the description. But in these types of videos, you are asked to focus on a particular process that's occurring. Maybe um, people passing a basketball or people moving a cup around with a, with a penny underneath it and you have to keep track of it. And what happens is at the end of the video, you are asked some questions <laughs> about what else happened in the video. And because you were concentrating so vigorously on one particular aspect of the video, you miss certain other things that were happening. The truth is that that is exactly how we see reality. That is exactly what happens when we are processing our surroundings every single day. So I could ask you to walk down your road now and you might be like, oh, I know the road like the back of my hand. I walk down that road every single day. I know how many people there are on my street. I know how many cats live on my street. I know whose cars are whose. But if I asked you how many lampposts were there or what colour is the Joneses' front door, for example. Even if you've driven past or walked past all the houses on that street multiple times and you've probably looked at them, they've been exactly in your field of vision multiple times in your life, you may not have actually processed a lot of what you were looking at because it wasn't important to you at the time. 
and the truth is that's how we see the world every single day when we're living. We live with inattentional blindness every single day. And this is something I find completely fascinating because it means that you think that your perception of reality is true and truthful when actually your perception of reality is incomplete and it's coloured by your personal experiences. So the truth is that we never really access reality in its rawest form. So when does this become an issue? It becomes an issue when your life is coloured by negative experiences, whether it's pain, boredom, a struggle, negativity, or some sort of upheaval, um, grief and tragedy. If that is your experience of life and that is your perception of what the world is like, it can cause a lot of inner turmoil and it can become almost unbearable to believe that your reality is so painful. Further to this, when two people's perceptions of reality clash and they don't work together, it can become really difficult. If you believe that your perception of reality is reality and you aren't aware that you've applied your own lens of personal experience to your version of reality, it can become really, really difficult when people tell you that things are different from the way that you see them. It can become even more difficult when the reality that you see, that you feel, inside you is different from the reality that other people are living in. Ultimately I'm telling you all of this about perception because I want to empower you with the knowledge that you can look at reality in a different way and that you can use your understanding of perception to make yourself more empathetic and to alter your mindset about how the world actually works. I want you to think of your perception of the world as a film reel. And films are made just like this. Horror films, you're constantly shown jump scares. You hear those really loud, <laughs> frightening banging sounds or creepy rocking chair or, or creaking door sounds. And those are at the forefront of the film. These are the things that you hear with clarity. The, the visuals that they show you to frighten you are what you see with clarity and they're the ones that flash up onto the screen. In rom-coms, you know that they apply the, uh, the fuzz lens, the romantic uh, fuzz lens, um, what's it called? Soft focus, something like that. They apply that and they apply soft music, they apply close-up shots of people's faces. You will see and feel a romantic uh, moment of connection. So where you place the camera and how you place the camera and the sounds that you listen to and the content of that scene makes up the film and it makes up the genre, it makes up the viewer experience. So let's talk about your film, your personal film, and this is your perception, this is your life actually. You could put the camera on the same story every single day, you could put it on the film shots of you rolling out of bed, turning off your alarm clock, putting on the same grey clothes every day, on the same route to work, and then filling out the paperwork every single day. Maybe that's the film that you would show to people to say that's what my life is actually like and you would say it's so boring. And maybe if someone else watched that film, they would completely agree with you that your life is boring. However, you might work an office job, but you could put the camera on different aspects of your life. You could place the camera on the beautiful flowers on the way to work. You could put the camera on the amazing meal that you have with your colleagues for lunch. You could put the camera on the intimate and detailed conversations that you have with people when you go to dinner with them. Life is so full of richness. Everything about life is rich. It's the flavors, it's the colors, it's the sensations. Everything around you is full of richness, but you have to put the focus in the right place because as I said, inattentional blindness means that your brain will discard all the things that your brain doesn't value as important or that you're not placing your focus on. This should be a tool in your toolkit for when life feels crap, when life feels boring, when life feels dull and life feels negative. You have this power in your toolkit to literally realign your focus. If you wrote down a list of all the things that you hate and you went through and did them every day, guess what? You would hate life. If you wrote down a list of all the things that you love, enjoy and value and those are the things that you did every day, your life will feel full, your life will feel positive, amazing and you will experience things in a way that is so pleasurable. You'll want to live that life every single day. So what I'm telling you is that you will never really access reality in its truest and rawest form because it's not possible for the human brain to do that. We don't have those capabilities. We can't render the whole of our surroundings in perfect clarity all at once. It's just not possible. But what I am telling you is that you look at life through a lens and that you can place the lens in the right place. You can focus your attention and energy on things that bring you joy, that bring you purpose, that bring you love. So what I'm really trying to say is this. You can create a heaven or hell based on where you place your focus in your life. You can create a dream or a nightmare because 
If you're looking at the things that are nightmarish, that's how the film reel will play. If you're looking at the things that are wonderful, bright, colourful, um, exciting, that's how your film will play. I'm telling you this because I'm so guilty of not having done that for my whole life. I definitely placed energy and focus on things that weren't always positive, but now that I have the knowledge that I can change my film based on where I place my energy, of course I'm going to do it in the right way. I'm going to focus on the amazing food, the amazing company, the amazing people. Those tiny little beautiful flowers on, on my daily walk. The sunshine on my skin. I'm going to focus it on all of those things no matter how big or small because those are the things that I want my life, my film, to be filled with. I want it to be filled with those beautiful shots. Okay, and the last thing that I want to say about perception, which I think is so important to us being empathetic as humans, is to remember that every single person is reacting to their perception of reality based on whatever it is that they've got in their own personal lens of experience, right? So that means when someone overreacts to something you say to them, someone takes something in the wrong way, it's because their personal experiences have shown them a bad outcome of something, 